Yeah, I'm feeling good because today's a good day. If you're familiar with the channel, you know I switched from using FreeSky transmitters to the Jumper T16 back in October of 2019. I got my Jumper T16 Pro, the original version, from one of the first batches produced, and I've had fun flying with it ever since. I haven't had any issues with ribbon cables like others have, who received their T16s in later batches, and it's been a dependable transmitter for me, even when flying over lakes. Jumper has discontinued the T16, and has now come out with three different versions of the follow-on T18. Meanwhile, a new Challenger has entered the arena, the RadioMaster TX16S. I recently received this from RadioMaster, so today we're going to check it out, add some of my own personal touches to it, like installing switch covers, new stick ends, custom splash and background screen images, along with my own custom sound. We'll also do some of the initial setup of the transmitter using the user's manual for things like calibrating the battery voltage, calibrating the gimbals, and setting up the default gimbal mode and channel order. I'll also show you how you can easily copy models from another transmitter running OpenTX firmware over to the RadioMaster TX16S through OpenTX Companion, thanks to the outstanding work of the OpenTX developers. If you'd like to show your support of both the OpenTX and multi-protocol dev teams, links are available in the video description below. I'll wrap things up by doing a comparison of the RadioMaster TX16S with the Jumper T18 light version and finished with a quick flight using a stick cam view of the RadioMaster TX16S. So by the end of this video, you should have a great idea of whether or not the RadioMaster TX16S is the right transmitter for you. Sound good? Then make sure to give this video a thumbs up below, share it with your friends, and subscribe to your TMAC FPV channel, your home for your journey to better FPV fun, flights, and racing stuff. All right, let's see what's in the box. Ooh, stickers. I always like stickers. Radio Master TX16S Quick Start Guide. It is four pages long and it comes in various languages. Ooh, a nice foam carrying case. That's solid too. Sweet. Feels good in my hands. Feels solid. Feels very solid. I'll do a weight test comparing this to the Jumper T16 as well. But this feels like a nice solid radio. Let's put this aside see what else is in the box. Looks like I got a Radio Master lanyard. That's cool. Hook it up here as a neck strap. What else we got? Ooh, it gave me some uh, different colored stick ends as well. Sweet. Got a USB-C cable. Some different tension springs for the gimbals and a nice little keychain. TX16S Open TX. Nice! I like this carrying case too. Let's put this aside for now. Alright, let's compare the weight of the TX16S to that of the Jumper T16. That comes in at 782 grams and the Jumper T16 comes in at 717 grams. This just feels sturdier for some reason. It's got these raised grips on the back, which actually makes it easier for me to hold. I can wrap my uh, fingers around these. It just makes it an easier place to rest your fingers. All right, one of the differences between the RadioMaster TX16S and the Jumper T16 is its battery bay. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. This is the battery bay of the Jumper T16 comes with this lithium-ion battery case with the SD card inside the, the battery bay. You can see how this battery case fits in the Jumper T16. Take a look at the TX16S. Before I even open up the battery bay on this, you'll notice this little square cutout. You can remove that and run your battery cable from inside the battery bay to your crossfire module which gets attached here if you'd like to power your crossfire module from an XT30 connector on your batteries. 
that's some attention to detail and is a nice touch by Radio Master. Somebody's using their head in Radio Master and is paying attention to detail with little things just like that. And all those little things add up. Here's the same lithium ion battery case that gets plugged in here. And you can see the difference in the amount of room you have left over, which means you can actually use a bigger and higher capacity battery inside the TX16S battery bay than you'd be able to with the Jumper T16. Good stuff. All right, one of the first things I'm going to do is I want to power my TBS Crossfire module up through the battery bay through this rectangular cutout, which I'll have to remove to run the XT30 connector of the battery up to our TBS Crossfire module. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to remove the Crossfire module like that. Then I'm going to take this battery bay cover off. Another nice feature that the Radio Master has done is they've actually put a piece of foam on the battery bay cover to prevent your batteries from rattling around inside the battery compartment. Another attention to detail type step they did. I'm going to take these 18650s and this battery case out of here. Now these are rated at 3000 milliamp hours. Radio Master has come out with their own 5000 milliamp hour battery pack for this. There's only a few places that sell it and nowhere that I could find in North America for the Radio Master brand. Instead, what I was able to find was a 5000 milliamp hour 2S lithium ion battery from Bob at Bob's Batteries, which ships from Arizona. He's got a good reputation on RC groups. Lots of people have uh, bought his stuff, so I thought I'd give him a try. And sure enough, got this in just a couple days from Arizona in the United States. It says, Artisan Batteries for the Discerning RC Pilot. I charged this from 7 volts to its max capacity of 8.2 volts on my charger in 1 hour and 44 minutes using 3 amps per the recommendation on Bob's website. So I actually did not use the internal charging of the max 1.5 amps as stated in the specs for the Radio Master TX16S. I externally charged this battery pack using 3 amps on in the lithium ion mode of my balance charger. So the way I'm going to do this is this connector goes right in here. I'm going to set the battery in here. I got an extra cable. This is uh, the cable that comes with the battery. I got an extra one so that with an XT30 connector on it so that I could run it up through this rectangular cutout and to the XT30 connector to charge my TBS Crossfire module directly from this battery pack. That way I can extend my flight time by charging the module directly from the battery pack as opposed to having to go through the transmitter. In fact, at high power wattages, people have reported being able to use this for up to 10 to 12 hours without recharging this 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack. That's good stuff. So what I need to do now is cut out this little rectangular spot here, which Radio Master has already scored for us, and remove that, and then I'm just going to run this XT30 connector up through that hole to our crossfire module. I'm going to do that very carefully and very patiently with a razor blade knife, just by scoring it very gently along the edges to the point where I can punch it out. We'll see if that works. All right, what I did was I gently and patiently ran the razor blade knife along the scoring edges of this rectangular piece, and I was prepared to take several minutes doing that, and because of the way Radio Master had already scored this, it didn't take me long at all. It took me less than 90 seconds. This thing is just gonna pop right out now. It's got foam on the back of it that we saw earlier, which is this stuff right here that I can just clean out. And there you have your XT30 connector hole, supposedly, which should fit this. And I'm glad it does, because that would have been embarrassing if it didn't. But that feeds right up through there. We're gonna connect Bob's battery to transmitter like that. Because I've got enough room in this battery bay, because it's extra large, I'm gonna run the cables along inside in here like that. Put our module back in. power on a crossfire module like that that is some good stuff right there I like it okay now one thing to keep in mind when you turn your transmitter off if you've got this powered if you've got your TBS crossfire module powered from the battery 
please remember to remove the battery cable from your module to power your module off as well. But now I've got a fully charged 5,000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery from Bob's Batteries, which you can get at rcbatterykit.com. And I'm able to power my TBS Crossfire module for more than a day's worth of flying from that battery pack. All right, let's power this thing on for the first time. Beautiful. All right, one of the things I wanted to see on this was what version of OpenTX it's got installed on it. So I'll press the Sys button and go down to firmware. It's also got the internal multi-protocol module firmware installed on it as well. We can go ahead and check this against the latest version of OpenTX. If, even if there is a later version of OpenTX, that does not necessarily mean that we have to update this to the newest version of OpenTX. This radio should run fine the way it is with whatever version of OpenTX it's got installed on it. But we can go ahead and check the latest version of OpenTX, update it if we want to, don't if we don't want to, as well as we can check the latest version of the internal multi-protocol module. What I do want to accomplish though is transfer the models that are currently in my Jumper T16 to the RadioMaster TX16S. And we'll do that here in just a bit. One thing that I've already noticed is this scroll wheel is a lot nicer. It's a knurled metal scroll wheel as compared to this plastic one of the Jumper T16, which also isn't bad. This just feels a little bit better, nicer, higher quality. That's the word I'm looking for. This looks and feels like a higher quality scroll wheel than the one on the Jumper T16. That's just another one of those attention to detail things that Radio Masters got right with the TX16S. All right, before we go any further with this, what I want to do is a little bit of customization. I'm going to put these non-slip switch covers on my switches, and I'm going to replace these stick ends. Since I'm a thumber, I like a wider top to my stick ends. So I've got two different kinds to choose from here. I've got the Vantech Grand Lotus stick ends, and I've also got the Vantech Umbrella stick ends. I've been using the umbrella type stick ends on my Jumper T16, similar ones. These are actually bigger and they've got a concave top to them. These are a little bit smaller in diameter and it's not as concave as these and it's got a little bit of a rougher surface. Or I can go with these which aren't concave at all but they're wider and they're more grippy at top. I think I like these. I'll go with the Grand Lotus stick ends and replace the original ones. So we'll put the switch covers on and put the new Grand Lotus stick ends on. First one I'm going to put on for my switch cover is my GPS Rescue, which is red for an emergency. My arm switch is going to be green for go, as is my launch switch, launch mode activated. Then my OSD profiles. I set up on switch B, that's going to be a white cover, as is my black box switch to make sure that I'm not unnecessarily filling up my black box cap flash memory capability. My beeper switch is this momentary switch down here, and I use a blue cover for that, blue for beeper, easy for me to remember. And then I've got my mode switch here, and my rates switch here, angle, acro trainer, acro, which it's normally there unless I'm teaching somebody something else from one of the other modes. My mode switch is going to be black, and I've got three different rate profiles on this switch, low, medium, and high, and that's going to be a clear switch cover. All right, now let's swap out the stick ends with the Grand Lotus. By the way, both the Grand Lotus stick ends and the Umbrella stick ends, you can go ahead and get those on Amazon, and I've put links to them in the video description below. I'm going to use the Grand Lotus stick ends. To change the stick ends out, got a hex screw in here. Just unscrew it. Comes right out. Set that aside. And then you just loosen up the stick end. Now these stick ends are actually fairly tall. I tend to like lower height sticks than this. So when I replace them with the Grand Lotus stick ends, I'm going to use the shortest height possible with the Grand Lotus. So I'm taking those out. That's how long that is. Here's the top of the Grand Lotus stick end. It comes with a spacer as well. So if I use the spacer with the Grand Lotus stick end, it's almost the same size 
as the original stick ends. It's just a little bit shorter. However, I'm not going to use a spacer so that I've got the shortest height possible. So all these do is they just screw back on. They don't even need that little uh, hex screw to go on top. That's how easy it is to replace a stick end. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the left one. All right, now let's do some of the initial setup of the transmitter using just a few pages of the user's manual to calibrate the battery voltage, the gimbals, and setting the default gimbal mode and channel order. This user's manual for the TX16S is the best one I've seen for a transmitter. It's very detailed and complete. Let's calibrate the battery voltage. It says what type of batteries this example is good for, and it includes my 21700-2S 7.4 lithium-ion pack that I got from Bob's batteries, 5,000 milliamp hours. It says press and hold the sys button to enter the system settings. Press the page key to move to the hardware page. Hardware. Scroll to the bottom of the page and select battery calibration. There it is, battery calibration. And enter the actual measured battery voltage. I just charged up the battery to 8.2 volts, and that's what we're showing here. So that's actually good. So exit out of there. We go over to radio setup and enter the battery level range in the battery meter range as shown below, 6 to 8.4 volts. So I'm going to change this from 6.2 to 6. Then on the current page, turn the scroll wheel to find battery low or the voltage alarm. There it is. And fill in the alarm voltage as shown below. When the remote control voltage is lower than the current set voltage, the system will play a voice alert and report that the battery voltage is low. And we want to set that at 6.2. There it's set. Next, we want to calibrate the gimbals. Each TX-16 is calibrated in the QC process. However, due to varying shipping conditions, we suggest you calibrate your radio before first use. In the system settings, scroll to the hardware page. So we're going to page over to hardware. Right there. Select the calibration item and press OK to enter the settings. Press Enter to start. Before I do that, I'm going to read forward. Follow the text prompts at the top for calibration. and the first step prompts, press the confirmation key to start. Center sticks, pots, sliders, and press enter. Pots, centered, sliders, centered, press enter. And move the sticks, pots, sliders, and press enter. So this the, move all the gimbals, knobs, and side sliders to the respective maximum and minimum positions and the system is going to record the maximum and minimum values. At this time the sixth position button may be pressed one by one. So we're going to do that first. And you see down here those move. One, two, three, four, five, six. The system records the value of each button. The value of the key can be viewed at the bottom of the page. After all the above steps are completed, press enter to complete the calibration and the system automatically returns to the previous page. Important note, use a left and right up and down pattern when calibrating the sticks for the most accurate calibration. Do not make circular motions with the sticks. So we're going to go like this. Left, right, up, down left, right, up, down, and you don't want to jam the stick as far as it'll go and put apply pressure at the maximum or the minimum values. That's not what you're going to be doing while you're flying. Let's do the pots. Left, right, center, left, right, Center. And remember, we've got sliders on the side, so I'm going to do the right slider. Goes down here to the minimum. Goes up here to the maximum, and back to the center position. Left slider. Minimum. Maximum. And center position. And we just calibrated our sticks, pots, and sliders. Now let's set the default gimbal mode and the default channel output order. In the system settings, Turn to the page to the radio setup. So I'm going to page over to radio setup. Right there. And scroll the wheel to the bottom of the page. And we want to see the default channel order. Right there. Default channel order. AETR. Mode. Gimbal mode. Set by factory depending upon the mode you purchased. I selected mode 2 which is throttle on the left. And that's what it's at. 
Because the channel input order of the built-in multi-protocol transmitting module of the RadioMaster TX16S is AETR, in the default channel order option, be sure to select AETR order, which we've done. The mode can be selected according to your personal preference. Mode 1 for right-hand throttle, mode 2 for left-hand throttle. These icons down here, rudder, throttle, elevator, and aileron, indicate the names of the gimbals corresponding to the position, to the position of the gimbal on the remote control. So what they're saying here is the rudder and throttle are on the left stick, aile, uh, yaw and throttle, and then the elevator for pitch and aileron for roll is on the right stick. So if I change this to a different mode, it should change these values down here. And it does, but I'm going to be using mode 2. So we'll leave it on mode 2. And that's how we calibrate the battery voltage, the gimbals, and setting the default gimbal mode and channel order. We're good to go. Okay, in order for me to use the new TX16S, I'm going to select my models, which of course aren't in here yet. So I need to copy the models from my Jumper T16 and put them into the RadioMaster TX16S. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, in order to get our models on our new RadioMaster TX16S transmitter, we've got to copy them from our Jumper T16. I've already done that, but I'm going to go through the process anyway to show you how to do it. So the first thing we need to do is power on our Jumper T16 transmitter in the bootloader mode by holding the trim tabs in and pressing the power button. And now, normally you connect it to your computer via the USB cable. I've already got my USB cable plugged into a USB hub, so I'm just going to push the button on the hub. And now within OpenTX Companion, we make sure that we're on the correct radio profile, which in my case is Jumper T16 Pro, and we want to read the models and settings from the radio. So we click here. And there are my models from the radio. At this point, all we need to do is save that to a file on our desktop. And then we'll retrieve those from the desktop and write them to our new RadioMaster TX16S. So the first step is File, Save As. And I've already got a folder created on my desktop. And then you save the file as a .otx and click Save. Since I've already got it saved, it's asking me if I want to replace it? Sure, I'll replace it. And now that file is here on our desktop computer, which we can then upload to our RadioMaster TX16S. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, now we do a similar thing with our TX16S. To get the model files off of the desktop computer and onto the TX16S, we put the TX16S in bootloader mode, plug in the USB cable to your computer, in my case, I've got it hooked up to a USB hub, so I'm going to press the button. And within OpenTX, we go to our settings and our radio profiles, and you'll notice I don't have a TX16S radio profile here. So we need to do a new radio profile. Go to the settings, and I'm going to name this Radio Master TX16S. I'm using OpenTX Companion 239 up here. So on version 239 of OpenTX Companion, I scroll down and I see that I've got Radio Master TX16S here. I'm going to click No Heli because I don't fly helicopters. I'm going to click Lua for Lua scripts. And you've got these other options here too, which you may or may not want to click on. You can hover your mouse over any one of them and it'll show you what those are. I am mode 2. I want to change my default channel order to AETR. That's what I normally fly right there. And from there we click OK. Now to get those models onto the TX16S, first we need to read the original models and settings that are installed on the radio. So we do that by clicking here, and that's there. And then we want to open up the file that we previously saved to our computer from the Jumper T16, which is here. It says, currently selected radio type TX16S from our radio profiles is not compatible with the T16 models and settings, and they need to be converted. Do you want to convert them? Yes, we do. And that opens up this window, because OpenTX Companion has converted our models and settings from the T16 into a format which can be read 
by the TX16S. So what we do now is we copy these models, just highlight these, and move them from here to there. And now you see that we've got Aero 3 Hybrid, Kalugo, Primo, Rattler, GTR90, Mobile 7, and Tadpole. Now we can close this window out because we don't need it anymore because this is our TX16S window. And now what we want to do is we want to write these models and settings to the TX16S. Write models and settings to the radio. And now to verify that they're there, we just go back and we read models and settings from the radio. And there they are. So all of our models have now been copied from our Jumper T16 into our Radio Master TX16S. We're good to go. All right, as I previously mentioned, I've got custom images for my models, and I've also got custom images for my splash screen and also my background image. So I want to get these images onto my TX16S. To do that, we hold the trim tabs in and press the power button to get in bootloader mode, just like we did previously. We connect the transmitter to the computer via the USB cable, and now it shows up down here as one of our drives, our USB drive E. Underneath this USB drive, we've got various folders. I've opened up two windows. On the left, we have my hard disk drive with the custom image files on it. And on the right, we've got my USB drive for the TX16S with its folders in here. Now, these model images, we just want to move over into this images folder. So I want to take these and move them over here, like that. And now you see all these image files, my custom image files for my models, are now residing on the USB drive for my TX16S. If you're not familiar how to make custom images for your models, your splash screen, or your background image, check out this video on custom images. Now we want to do the same thing for our splash screen. However, before I move the splash image over here, I don't want to overwrite the one that's currently on the transmitter. So all I'm going to do is rename this old splash, old underline splash, I'll call it. And I want it to be all caps so it stands out because the name of your splash screen and your background image, background in this case, is important because that's what the system's looking for. So now I've got old splash over here. Now I'm going to move splash over here. And there it is. Now this background image isn't under the images folder. It's under your themes folder default right here. So I want to move this custom background image from my hard drive over here. But once again, I don't want to overwrite the one that's currently on there. So I'm going to rename this old background. And now... I take my custom background image, and once again, you can check out the video on custom images for the proper dimensions and locations and naming conventions of this file, but I'm just going to move it over here, and now I've got background under themes default. If I open that up, there's my custom background image. So now with those custom images, splash screen, background image, and my model images on my TX16S, I can select them to use in place of the default images. Let's go ahead and do that. So we exit out of here, exit, and I'll show you how to do one model image. There's my splash screen, and let's select a model, and I'm gonna select my Rattler, it's already there. And there's my Rattler custom image, as well as my custom background image and logo on my TX16S. Pretty cool. Now we can do the same thing with our custom sounds. All right, now we're going to do a similar process for our custom sounds. Get it in bootloader mode, hold the trim tabs together, power it on. Starting to get the hang of this? Connect the transmitter to the computer via the USB cable. And over here we've got our USB drive. I'll put this on the right. So I've got two windows open up. Over here is my hard drive, which I previously saved the custom sound files from my Jumper T16 that were on the SD card under the folder sounds to my hard drive. So I've grabbed them off the Jumper T16, and I've put them on my desktop on this left folder. On the right folder, I've got our Radio Master TX16S USB drive. So we want to go under Sounds, English. This is our startup soundtrack. This one that's on my desktop is a custom soundtrack, which is a clip 
of a cover song of Come Fly With Me. Over here, under system, hello.wave is the welcome to OpenTX. So we'll play this. Welcome to OpenTX. And we'll play my custom one. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly. So I don't want to get rid of Welcome to OpenTX, so I'm going to label this, rename it, Old Hello, Old Underline Hello, and that's under our Sounds English Systems folder. It's now here. So under that same folder, I want to move that clip here. So now, when I turn the radio on, it will play Come Fly With Me. Under our Sounds folder, English, all of these files are where I want to put the rest of these custom soundtracks. This one is for a low battery. This one is for my GPS rescue switch being activated. GPS rescue engaged. This is my launch this is my launch mode activated. Launch mode activated. Ready to launch. And this is my control signal link low. Link quality is low. Adjust flight profile. And this is when I've got my throttle limit engaged to dial in my max throttle using my potentiometer on my transmitter. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, check out this video on throttle control. And if you're not sure how to make custom soundtracks, check out this video on custom sounds. In any case, these five soundtracks, I want to move over to Sounds English. And there they are. So now we've got all of our custom sounds to include our opening soundtrack in the systems folder. And we've got these other ones in the normal sounds folder, English. So now that they're copied over, we can disconnect and watch what happens when I click exit. Let's try it again. Good stuff. We're about ready to fly. This is a chart comparing all of the features I could both think of and find between the RadioMaster TX16S and the Jumper T18 Lite. The same chart is also available on my website at tmacfpv.com where I list all of my recommended FPV gear like transmitters, goggles, quadcopters, and simulators. You'll notice I'm not comparing the other versions of the Jumper T18 with the internal 5-in-1 module using the 900MHz system. This is because those versions that have the 5-in-1 module use the older FreeSky protocol for the 900 MHz system. Even if that 900 MHz capability worked today as advertised with the 5-in-1 module, and I've heard from some folks that it doesn't, FreeSky could stop making receivers which use that protocol at any time to force users to purchase the FreeSky R9 external module. Recently, FreeSky has changed firmware on the receivers and transmitters for that matter, which essentially has forced pilots to use only genuine FreeSky products. So who knows how long the 900 MHz capability will exist in those 5-in-1 modules. Therefore, I cannot recommend anyone spending more money on those versions of the Jumper T18, and consequently, I'm not going to be making any comparisons to them. The Jumper T18 Lite, though, is a different matter. It essentially is the upgraded Jumper T16, which has served me well, without ribbon cables and a black faceplate. So I am making a comparison between the RadioMaster TX16S and the Jumper T18 Lite. The features I'm comparing are in the left-hand column. The RadioMaster TX16S is in the center, and the Jumper T18 Lite is on the right. The features which are highlighted in purple text are different between the two transmitters. I'm not going to spend time going through in detail each of these. They're fairly self-explanatory. First of all, the TX16S currently has OpenTX support. There's an option for it in OpenTX Companion, so you can update it with the latest OpenTX version now, if you want to, although you can use it the way it comes out of the box until you're ready to do so. I will say some of my favorites are the ability for the TX16S to use a larger battery, which means more flight time and less charging time. I also like this metal scroll wheel. It doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but it sure does feel a lot better, more solid, and higher quality than the plastic one. The user manual for the Radio Master is next level in quality. It actually blew me away. And as of now, it looks like the RadioMaster TX16S is being sold currently at more locations than the Jumper T18 Lite. However, that might change in the future. Lastly, I found the energy behind RadioMaster's support to be impressive. So which one of these two should you buy? 
Well, the nominal cost for each is about the same. If both were available for me to purchase, I wouldn't hesitate. I'd go with the RadioMaster TX16S. That's my take on the RadioMaster TX16S. In my opinion, simply the best value transmitter on the market today. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the RadioMaster TX16S, and if you have any questions or what other TX16S content you'd like to see on your TMAC FTV channel. Until then, make sure to check these out next. Thanks for your time. I'll see you next video. Clear skies, friends.